Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Hello, my dear grade 5 students, and welcome back to Alman High School's Education English channel. Today, inshallah, we're going to have two lessons. So please pay attention and be ready, and I want you all ears. Inshallah, go, today we're going to uh, start with uh, Unit 8, uh, Lesson 7. Uh, which is phonics and spelling and there is page 94 and activity work page 88 and when we finish the game we're going to have the social studies lesson uh people's book page 95 and activity work page 89 so let's start bismillah rahman rahim i'm going to start with the people's book and today's lesson actually is about intonation first Firstly, let me ask you, what's intonation? Simply, intonation is the rise or fall in the tone or in the volume of the sound. All right. So, intonation is the rise or fall in the pitch of the sound or the inflection. Means the rise and fall. So, in some sentences or questions, we start with with uh, a falling volume or a falling intonation and then it ends up in a rising intonation all right and uh, sometimes we start with a uh, rising intonation and we ends up the sentence in falling intonations but today especially we're going to talk about intonation with exclamation what's exclamation you know the exclamation mark and you see it exclamation expresses surprise agreement disagreement greeting or attracting attention and usually when we use intonation with exclamation it's falling intonation it's falling intonation but we have other cases in which we use a rising intonation i'm going i'm going to talk to you later about that right but let's first uh, listen to these expressions all right exclamatory uh, expressions or sentence good luck that's expression we use it to hope good luck all right listen and i want you to repeat and decide is it a rising or a falling intonation all right as you notice all of them are have a falling intonation good luck good luck all right it's not too expensive it's not too expensive we start with it's that rising intonation and we ends up with expense which is a falling intonation good morning good is a rising we, we rise the volume all right we rise it's rising all right good so it's like curve moving up and then going down good that's up morning and that's down all right thank you thank you you see thank is up is rising you is falling oh that's rising at least dear that's falling all right guys so usually we have falling intonation with exclamatory expression or with exclamation all right let's move to the ne next activity here in this activity you have a conversation and here there is a lady who is in a clothing shop or a hat shop trying to shop for a hat all right as you see she's trying one and i want you to focus on the pink or uh, the pink lines or the pink expressions and decide whether they are falling or uh, rising intonations all right listen
Alright guys, as you noticed, mostly, most of these expressions has a falling intonation, like Good morning, madam. Good morning. Of course. Oh, excellent. Oh, is a rising. Excellent is a falling intonation. Alright, but if you look here, alright, um, there are, as I told you, there are some expressions exclamatory expressions that ends with exclamation and exclamation mark but in these expressions we use a rising intonation our volume or our sound rise all right um especially warning warning expression warning expression that have exclamation that have exclamation and exclamation mark at the end all right or if we if, if we use a short expression for dragging attention or dragging others attention all right for example when i say i want somebody and say look out look out hey look out be careful be careful that's arising in the scene arising intonation all right um but the regular exclamatory sentence we use in the regular ones we use a falling intonation like when i say mostly we start the exclamation sometimes with what or how we we'll say what a nice car what a nice car see it starts with a rising what and ends in a falling intonation car and so on how beautiful your dress is how beautiful your dress is so that's falling intonation but with warning expressions we use rising intonation to drag attention all right guys so let's move to the next activity you have two sentences sentences you would listen to the speaker and decide which one he is using the one with a period with a regular intonation or the one with a falling intonation with exclamation which one he used i like it very much I like it very much. Yes, this is a falling intonation. Which one? You are very intelligent. That's regular intonation. It doesn't have uh, a falling intonation. All right. You're very intelligent. Number three. Number three. They are tired. Now let's hear it again. Yes, they are tired. It, it's regular intonation, doesn't have a falling intonation. So this one is the correct one. You see the rising intonation? I hate vegetable that's falling intonation so the correct one is the one with the exclamation all right let's move to the last activity i want you to listen to me and try to repeat that at home how expensive how that's rising how expensive you're expressing surprise how beautiful how beautiful you see rising and falling rising and falling how funny how funny i told you we have exclamation or exclamatory sentence we start with how or what to express surprise uh, or admiration how interesting how interesting it's so cheap it's so cheap it's so ugly it's so ugly it's so silly it's so silly it's so boring it's so boring start with the rising and then falling intonation that's it for our intonation lesson today i hope you got what i want you to get all right but it needs more practice at home it needs more practice at home the last activity listen and repeat you see the intonation regular one it doesn't have rising or fall i like this wallet see she want to express uh, agreement and attract the other attention toward that person so she said she start with a rising intonation i love i love that person then falling intonation oh dear rising and falling they're too expensive for me all right regular uh pitch 
Alright, that's it for our intervention lesson. Let's move to the second bar to do breaks from the activity book and that is page uh, all right here 86 page 86 you have the chart here the that table and you have to fill in that um, missing bars you choose from the expressions on top of the table to express surprise we say oh dear for greeting we say yes we say excellent good morning I'm sorry this one should end in uh, exclamation mark not a full stop agreement we say if we agree on something and we shake hands we say it's too bright I agree it's too bright also that's exclamation should have exclamation mark at the end if we dis di disagree about something disagreement we can say no it's too silly if we talk about a person or uh, a movie, for example, or a book, we say it's too silly. It's too silly. We, ag we, we have disagreement about that. To attract somebody's attention, and that can be rising into intonation, as I told you, because it's short expression to say, look, look, that's rising, all right? Uh, let's move to the second activity. You have to fill in the gaps with one of the, of the words uh, that expresses um, exclamation how beautiful how beautiful i should take a picture this shop is too huh? expensive excellent this shop is too expensive i can't buy anything this shop is too expensive i can't buy anything my cat is so lazy my cat is so lazy he sleeps all day number four she didn't say sorry huh? i hear someone want to say the answer excellent how rude how rude because she didn't say sorry how that's rising rude our tv is broken this is so boring this is so boring all right and let's move to the next activity 21 read and match look at the expression exclamatory expression one two three you have to match them with the correct reply or the correct uh, reply that suits them if somebody s uh, says to you some uh, thank you you say you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome goodbye you can say goodbye or see you later see you later okay i'm sorry we haven't got it i'm sorry we haven't got it oh no problem oh no problem all right so number two again goodbye you if if I said uh, goodbye you would say see you later or goodbye I'm sorry we haven't got it oh no problem in the last activity write four sentences use exclamation exclamation try to write uh, four exclamatory sentence or four sentences in which you use exclamation I'm going to do the first one for you uh, but the, the other think of another uh, other three sentences at home when I say uh, what a nice car I told you that we can start exclamatory sentences with what or how all right what we use an adjective and then a noun all right what a nice car or I can say how nice this car is what a nice car I really like it or how nice this car this car is all right that's exclamatory think of uh, uh, other three sentences all right guys and then now Let's move to uh, the second lesson today, which about social studies. Today in this social studies lesson, we're going to have a trip back in history, in history, to look at the history of toys. All right? Have you ever thought when was the first toy made and what was it like? L let's read that question on top. Which uh, which late twentieth century toy was one of the most popular toys? Which late 20s. When I say late 20s, uh, means in the 1990, 1991. That's late um, 20th century. Which toy in the late uh, 20th century was one of the most popular or famous toys? Let's read here. Toys through the ages. In London, there is a museum of childhood. It's a very interesting place because you can learn all about toys that children used to play with in the past and the when different toys were invented this timeline shows the history of popular popular uh, toys we have 
timelines which is divided in two parts the mo the ancient part and the modern part right the mod the ancient part uh, in each part you will find the date of each toy or the, the date of each invention all right for example let's start ancient times 5000 years ago that was the start of storm marvels storm marvels are first used in Egypt. So stone marbles were first used in Egypt 5,000 years ago, but now we use glassy marbles. 4,000 years ago, Egyptians made the first dolls from string, fabric, fabric means cloth and paper. So they made the first doll 4,000 years ago, which were made, which was made from cloth, string and paper. 3,000 years ago, kites appeared in China. So the first ones who made kites Chinese for the first time, you know, kites and we like to fly kites on the beaches. 1,500 uh, years ago, an early version of chess, uh, of chess is first played in India. So Indian, the Indians were the first people to play a new version of chess or chess. Um, let's start the modern age and that starts in the 18th century. When I say the 18th century, that means 17 something, 17, 10, 17, 20, 17, 25 and so on. Let's start with 1760. In the 1760s, and this is small s means, s means 61, 62, 63, in this decade, all right? Jigsaw, you know jigsaw puzzle? Jigsaw puzzle is like um, uh, a picture that's cut in small pieces, and you have to fit these pieces again together to make the picture uh, full or complete. Jigsaw puzzle are invented in England in, in 1760. Uh, that, that's like more, uh, that's almost like 280 um, years and then the first doll uh, the, as you see in the picture uh, dolls became popular in the USA they became famous and popular in the USA 1840 1880s stuffed toys when I say stuffed yeah, it means filled stuffed toys means filled uh, with uh, flexible materials like cloth uh, uh, paper uh, sponge stuffed toys are created in Germany in 1880s in 19 in 1900, uh, 1900, crayons. Crayons are colored pencils that's made uh, from wax. These crayons that used for painting became uh, popular in uh, uh, 1900 or 1900. In 1910, the first rubber toy balloons appeared. The first rubber toy balloons appeared. In 1920s, UU toys are created. UU toys were created. 1940s started battery or toys that work with battery and became popular with robot in Japan. That we started the battery with uh, toys with robot, robot that use battery. All right. 1980 thought the magic cube. Thought the magic cube. And you know the magic cube. Magic cube is a colored one. You have to fix um, the rose with the same color. All right. Uh, the the they were the best uh, selling toys in the world in the teen eighties. In two thousand, high tech educational toys taught toys that that work on the internet or that's related to the internet, and they became very popular. Let's move after that timeline, and you have to go back to it. Let's match these toys uh, with the number first one, number A. That's stuffed toys. Stuffed toy. If we go back here, which number stuffed toys? Stuffed toy is number three, as you see. Stuffed toy is uh, number three. So let me show you the answer just to save time, and you have to go back. Stuffed toy is number three, and this magic cube, number five. And you can go back and check. Um, number E, the rubber balloon, that was number four. And chess, that was number one. And number uh, D is the jigsaw puzzle, and that was number two in the timeline. All right, let's move ahead. And we'll put true or false. Those first appeared in Egypt. Is that true or false? Yes, true. Chess was invented in China. Is that true? No, false, because it started in India. Jigsaw so are were invented in the 18th century. True. The first toy balloons came from Germany. I guess that wasn't mentioned, so I don't know. Battery overrated toys became popular in 1950. That's. Let me go back to make sure. Here, here, all right, all right, yes, that's false. Jigsaw puzzle was made in the 18th century, in the 60s. 
so the first one as we said dolls first appeared in Egypt that's true chess was invented in China that's false in India jigsaw puzzle was invented were invented in the 18th century uh, true the first toy balloon came from Germany I don't know battery operated toys uh, became popular in the 1950 that wasn't mentioned so I yes that's false a high-tech toy was the best-selling toy of 2014 I don't know alright guys after that let's move to the activity book the last part today alright and in this activity book we have a reading text and this reading text it talks about game through ages the history of games different games. we have three games one of them let's read here would you follow up with me please that's page 88 one of the oldest game that we know about is Senate Senate is a board game looks like chess a board game that ancient Egyptians used to play I'll show you the picture and that is it that is uh, the game Senate game it looks like chess and this one it was a game for two people which was played with counters counters like chess we have counters and it used to be stones uh, some of them were white and for the other player he used the white the black one white and black all right how many counters which was played with counters on a board of 30 squares so this game has 30 squares the board has 30 squares with sticks the aim was to move the counters across the board as quickly as possible you have to move them quickly as possible a painting of the game how did they know that this game the ancient Egyptians know, knew this game because they found the game a painting uh, of the game in the tomb of Hisi which did back to 2600 ADC BC before Christ era this is the Senate, the ancient Egyptian game. Uh, the blocks, everyone knows the blocks, and all of us played with blocks. Wooden blocks, blocks start as wooden one. Wooden building blocks were first made in a large number in the 1820s in the USA. The first plastic building, then the the, the, the uh, proved or developed to be plastic one. Plastic blocks appears in 1949, and they continue to be one of the most popular toys in the world. This is because they help to make children's finger and hands strong and teach them about different shapes so uh, blocks were important as they said for children for children because they it teaches uh, them to be creative it made their finger and hand strong and teach them different shapes like circle uh, triangle squares and so on also children can be creative because they can design with the building blocks because they they can design their own designs and make their own designs the last one the last game is video games and all of us ha love video games video games first appeared in the 1950s like 70 years before and became really popular in the 1970s and 1980s since then they have developed very quickly with the internet games in the 1990s and mobile apps now we have mobile app we can download from the app store we can download games uh, which are connected to the internet in the 19 uh, so and mobile apps appears mobile app games in the 2000 uh, some scientists believe that computer games can be educational some believe they are good and can teach uh, kids but others the most scientists think that they're harmful to children brains because they cause uh, some diseases like autism for example and distract the student's mind all right let's have the question and this is the last part we're going to have today all right here in this table you have to write the date of each event senate was played in egypt in 2686 World number two wooden building blocks were made in large numbers excellent in 1820s and when i say 20s with s 20 21 22 in this decade decade number three the first plastic building blocks were made when good job 1949 number four the first video game was made 1950s good and the internet games first appeared in the 1990s the last one six mobile app games first appeared in 2000 let's have the AC questions number one is done for you number one how many people used to play senate at one time we said it's a game for two people ancient egyptian game number two how many squares did you use to be did there used to be on the Senate uh, board? We said 30 squares. 30 squares. Good job. Number three, what was the, the aim of the Senate? What was the aim of the Senate? We said the aim of the Senate, and you can go back and check from the text, to move the counters. So the aim of the game, to move the counters across the board as fast as possible. Number four, why are building blocks good for children? Scientists think 
that they can help students be creative with their own designs and also they can make their fingers and hands stronger. Good job. Number five, the last one. What do scientists think computer games do to children's brain? Some of them, they think they're educational, but most scientists scientists think uh, they are harmful to children's brain. They are harmful to children's brain. Uh, sorry for going so fast, but we're running out of time. I hope you enjoyed our lesson today, and I hope I added some piece of information to you. Um, please uh, work hard and watch that video again. And check the homework on the share edu. Don't forget that and electronic homework. Till we meet again, thank you and goodbye.